the boys that we've all been waiting to hear about, how'd they go in the main training? Yeah, they, they got through it. They got through it. So it's, um, I guess at this stage, we've got selection uh, pretty much as soon as I walk out of this press conference and um, we'll meet with Matt House, our head of HBT, see how they got through, see how they pulled up. But pleasingly, they, they all got through training today. So that was, that was a positive result. Just on a sort of quick fire individual level, yep. Sloaney looks like he's ready to return to senior football. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Yeah, Tommy Lynch the same. And obviously Lady with his hand. Um, looked to handle the ball well today, um, and Brownie as well. So Luke Brown got through training as well. Is that the biggest concern with Laird that he hadn't done a lot of marking and stuff like that in the lead up? Lead up to or, today's I think session. Matt yesterday yep. spoke that he said he hadn't, he still had yet to sort of progress to handballing and actually got him and catching the footy in that hand. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Obviously, with the break that he had, um, you know, it was obviously affecting his ball handling ability. So, um, as I said, he. He handled the ball well today and, and got through training, so it's not an issue anymore. Yeah. Um, how nice is that to go to selection with, it sounds like those four or five names on a whiteboard for the first time in a while. Yeah, it has been a, has been a while, hasn't it? Um, yeah, look, clearly it's been, it's been challenging at selection. You know, throughout the first um, 13 rounds that we play, 13 games that we've played, it's, you know, ins and outs have, have caused, I guess, lengthy selections and, and lengthy match committees. Um, I dare say this afternoon will be the same, but it's nice that we've got some some players, I guess senior players that, that can add to, to, I guess, the quality of, of individuals that come into the side that, you know, add to the way we want to play and um, the brand we want to play. So that's that's pleasing, you know, absolutely it is, definitely. The other one's Sam Gibson, a bit of back-related hamstring yeah. tightness. How did he go at training today? Um, yeah, look, no, he, he didn't get, get through training, so he won't be playing this week. Fingers crossed um, next week he's available, but it's, yeah, as you said, it's just sort of back-related hamstring tightness. So. We're hoping we can get him to a point next week where he's available for selection. What about the seed limped off the track really yeah. early? Yeah, yeah. I think he just copped a bit of a corky, like a low-grade sort of knock in the in the in the quad. So again, we'll find out this afternoon or in a few minutes' time with with Matt Hass. But I assume that that he's going to be fine to play. Now, what are you expecting yep. from Sloney? Is it a, has he done? Enough uh, what's his training well, like to get straight back in? Hopefully, it? six goals, forty-five touches, <laughs> and. Fifteen inside fifties. Now look, uh, yeah. Look, I, I guess it's that's the, the the big question as far as you know the workload that he's done since being injured. Um, you know, the, obviously our our HPT staff monitor his his workload and his recovery, and you know, I guess the the training workload that he's done over the last x amount of weeks in preparation for um, for hopefully on Saturday. So um, they're all over it these days. Individuals are monitored very very closely, and, and obviously unique and specialised training programs are designed for the players. So, you know, clearly he's going to be um, not at the level if he, uh, at, as far as that fitness and that, that match conditioning that he would if he had to play the last whatever games, but um, he'll be as close to that as, as he possibly could be. Is it the sort of injury that you can come straight back from and not be hindered by, in terms, not sort of aerobically, but in the actual foot? Like oh, look, I don't think they'd put him out there if, if there was any issues with that, so. Um, look at the end of the day, if he's given the, the green light to play, that's not going to be an issue. How much is a boost to these blokes give the squad? Uh, yeah, look, it, they, they, clearly they give them a, a massive boost, Andrew. Um, you know, when you look at a guy like, you know, you, you know use Roy Sloan as an example, he's a player um, that I guess just his actions, he leads by example and, and other guys feed off him. And, um, you know, when you're, you know, potentially bringing in four players that, uh, you know the quality that potentially come in this week. Um, it is a big, you know, it's a big opportunity, big boost for the playing group to, to see some of them back. But in the end, um, you know, it's on everyone to, to perform and play their role game day. So, um, I guess to answer your question, they, you know, they do add a lot to the rest of the group. How do you rate West Coast? Obviously, um, yep. we're flying high. No Darling, no Kennedy again ruled out. So that's obviously helps the Crows. Yep. Um, how strong are they still, or are they vulnerable now? Oh, look, they're still a, a pretty strong side, aren't they? Um, obviously, as you said, they've lost the, the last couple against Sydney and, and Essendon um, last week. So, you know, they've still got some, some quality players. Their midfield's very strong. You know, down back, they work well. Um, as you said, clearly there's Darling and, and Kennedy not playing. Um, but I guess the, the danger in the trap is that you, you don't go in or you, you potentially take your foot off the throttle because they're not playing. But that won't be the case this week because we know, they're, as I said, they're a quality opposition. and. Um, we're going to be had to, you know, have to play at our best to beat them. So without those two blokes, what is the biggest threat from your end on West Coast? Look, 
Look, I think at the moment, you know, if you looked at our, at our form line um, over the first 13 weeks, I guess in the end, we're, we're, you know, we're searching for consistency within games. Um, and I, you know, I know that if we can, and as a, I guess collectively, we know that if we can bring a level of consistency and play our brand for longer, then, you know, obviously West Coast are a challenging opposition, no doubt, and they'll be tough to beat. But we know if we can do that, when we're, you know, we're confident we can get the results. So I guess going to the game, it's about what we can bring to the table um, and knowing that our best is good enough. Trained here today and not at Adelaide Oval. Is it frustrating that the NRL is there on Friday night? Yeah, well, I live in Prospect, so it is for me, because um, Adelaide Oval is pretty close. Um, oh, no, look, it's, it is what it is. It is what it is. Facilities are good here. The ground's good here. No, that's no problem. Are you concerned that the turf at Adelaide Oval might get ripped up with the NRL boys going at it? Uh, oh, I haven't even thought of that, to be honest with you. I'm not playing, so uh, I think they'll get it, get it up to scratch, yeah. Mate, yeah. with your injuries, I've had to help your AFL team, but your sample team hasn't won a game. Mm -hmm. um, what's, what's the mood like and the attitude from the club about the local league? Yeah, look, I <laughs> that's a that's a good question. Um, you know, obviously we haven't we haven't won a game in the sample yet, and I suppose when you know you play up until halfway through the season, potentially it can become a bit of a you know a bit of a burden, I guess, or a bit of a um, potentially create a negative sort of environment, negative attitude towards it. But um, you know, to our guys' credit, the mood's still up, the environment, the vibe is still there, um, and. I guess sort of compounding that with players coming in and out there's not, hasn't been stability in the seniors, which has flowed on down to down to our sample side. But um, you know, we keep talking about it, keep playing our brand, um, and you know, a win's not far around the corner. Are you closer to working out with Brady will come back and play his first game? Or uh, actually, no. To be honest with you, I'm not I'm not 100 sure on that. Um, but he's not far away. He wouldn't be far away. He looks pretty good out there. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very good. Is there a chance he, is there a chance he plays Sanford next week? Or? Oh, I don't know. To don't answer know. your question, I'm not sure. Does not mean discuss over the coaches? or? Uh, no, not specifically. Yeah. Not as a coaching group, but no doubt there'd be conversations happening with Don and, and Matt has. What's, what's your take oh, on all the outside noise? You know, the, you've been involved in great programs, especially at Sydney. What's, what's your take on all the, the noise about the camp and, and the mood of the Adelaide Football Club? Look, I think in general it's, it's really... You know, getting back to um, controlling what we can control. You know, clearly there is a lot of noise out there, but it's 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 a matter of controlling our environment um, individually and collectively. So that's what we focus on. The case of all that's been put to bed now. And Sorry. The case of all that's been put to bed now, and there's a case of you know focus on the last night Absolutely. of the season. Yeah. How yeah. different is are the players now to back in your day in terms of you know the whole tapping into the mind and all that kind of stuff? Oh, I was sort of unheard of when I played. Mm -hmm. Good guys.